Today, we're going over a basic solar system setup for beginners because I'm a beginner. <laughs> this type of setup would be great for a small building or an RV or things like that. I actually have a storage building where I store my stuff and I like to have lights in it. But by the time I buy a wire to run out there, I rent me a ditch witch to dig the hole with. Then I had to buy a panel box to put in the building for my electricity. Wearing my lights, wearing receptacles, all that stuff. I'm already going to have a chunk of change in it. So I thought, why don't we set it up solar? That way when we're done, we never have to pay the power company again. It's like free power. Free power. That's awesome. You know that's awesome. So let's quit wasting time and let's get into this. First, I guess we need to start with the solar panels, okay? I bought three of these Renogy mountain brackets and they're made to hold solar panels. This right here is what comes in the box. I think I paid 25 or 26 dollars a piece for these. Like I said, I got three of them because I got three solar panels. These are mountain brackets that allow you to change the angle of the solar panel so you can point it towards the sun. This right here is what you get in the box. This right here is what it looks like after you're ready to mount your solar panel on it. They also come with four bolts for bolting on your solar panels. And they come with these little bolts with these uh, rubber washers for bolting it to your roof if that's how you're going to mount it. And we are mounting it to a roof, but not a house roof. <laughs> You can take this bolt loose and this bolt loose. You basically can make this thing lay down or stand up more. This is the solar panel that we're mounting on those mounts. I got the Rich Solar solar panels. The reason I picked them, there's a lot of YouTube reviews on these solar panels and they seem like they do really good. Plus, they're cheap. Just saying. I think these are like $79 a piece. That's actually cheaper than Harbor Freight solar panels. I got three of these. This is a single solar panel. We got us a two pack right here, which is the same exact thing, but it's got two solar panels in this pack. That's the only difference. These come packaged actually really nice. They got cardboard, they got foam all the way around it because these things do have glass in them. Pretty sure anyway. Looks good. Let's get her installed. As you can see, the sun's right over there and the sun kind of comes right over this way. So it's off to the side a little bit. Well, this is my chicken coop. And behind the chicken coop, I've got a storage building. I just got it built right onto the back of the storage building. I'm gonna mount my solar panels on the roof of the chicken coop and we're gonna kind of make them lean a little bit, pointing towards the sun that comes right over this way. That's rooster, she's a hen. But when she was little, we thought she was a rooster. <laughs> she turned out to be the best chicken I got. This is where they laid her eggs at. Sorry about that drum stick. <laughs> Whoops. As you can see, the chicken coop right on the back of the storage building. Plus, I just had a new roof put on my little building up there. And the chicken's roof is a galvanized metal roof. And if I screw this roof up, it'll be a lot easier to fix. So basically, on the back of the solar panel, I'm going to mount it right here and right here. And from this hole to that hole, it's 19 inches. Well, it's pretty much 19 inches. So from the outside, we're going to install a new board in here and make it to where it's like here and here. Well, wherever 19 inches is, we're going to install a new board. So I think I'm going to take my solar panels and I'm going to bolt them to the brackets first, get them good and secure, and I can lift them up onto the roof and bolt them down. And I think doing it this way will keep everything nice and straight because I'm doing it by myself and that ain't easy. So I have my brackets installed. I had them in installed this way though and they need to be installed that way because of the way I'm mounting them on my building. You know what I'm saying? This is my finished product. As you can see right here, I cut these off with a little sawzall I have because I really didn't need that part hanging over. See, when I flip this thing over, this part's going to be up in the air and I wanted it to look cleaner. Now the bottom piece I went ahead and left it long because this piece is going to be bolted to the roof and they're not going to be up against each other because if I put these things too close, what's going to happen is if they're lean like this, the front one's going to shade the back one because the sun's over there. All I'm saying is I don't think this is going to matter. Also, when I put them on the roof, I can put either side up and either side down. I've been thinking about it and I think I'm going to put my wires to the bottom side of the roof because that way it'll be easier to hook these things 
things up. Speaking of hooking these things up, I'm going to be running my solar panels in series. See, you got a positive and a negative. So I take my positive wire and I run it over to the negative on the next solar panel. Then I take that positive wire off that solar panel and run it to the negative of the next panel. It's kind of like hooking batteries up in series. But anyway, when you're done, you'll have a positive on one end and you'll have a negative left over on the other end. And you run that positive and negative to your charge controller, which we'll be talking about in a little bit. Right now I gotta finish getting these solar panels ready so we can put them on the roof. I tell you what, if you mount these on the roof that you could get on top of, it would be a lot simpler. Having to stretch way over there and work, it ain't easy. That's all I'm saying. So next, I gotta put two more of these on. These things turned out rock solid. I really do like them. So the next thing we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to hook these up in series. See how we got a negative and a positive. The positive is a male connector. The negative is a female connector. After you get your solar panels run in series, these are the wires I'll hook to the ends and run inside my building to my charge controller. See, this says 100% copper. That's what you want. Now, I just got to hook these up to my solar panels and run them inside the building. Okay, so I went to Lowe's. Lowe's Home Improvement, that is. <laughs> And I grabbed some white pine. I actually already had this board, but I grabbed me another one because I need to make a box. This is just one by tens. I'm gonna build all my solar unit in it, but I also need it deep enough to set my battery in. And I had a scrap piece of plywood that I've had for a while, so I'm gonna use it for the back. So I gotta get these cut up and put together. We're on a mission, people. We are on a mission. Okay, so we got our box made. It's actually pretty dang big. It's a little bigger than what I actually need, but today I'm only using one battery and I may add some more batteries later. So I just made it big enough to where if I wanted to add a couple more batteries, I'd have the room in here. And speaking of batteries, <laughs> I'm using a 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour, 1280 watt hour, lithium iron phosphate battery. Yes, it's lithium. That means it don't weigh nothing. It's a cheap battery and it gets really good reviews. Now, something that I really like about this battery is this screen right here. You turn this screen on and it actually tells you how much battery life you have left. And it'll tell you the current, but I don't have it hooked to anything right now, so it says zero. That that is pretty cool. Plus this thing's Bluetooth capable, which means you can hook it to your phone, but I really don't care about that. And I'm gonna be transparent. Somebody sent me this battery, but I was gonna do this video anyway, so they offered to send me a battery and I was like, okay send me a battery but the good thing about them sending me this battery is if you want to do a project anything like this and you want a battery they have this battery marked down right now to 329 dollars i think and if you use my code this right here is my code but you take that code and you put it in the little coupon box at checkout and you'll save 20 more bucks making this battery 309 dollars that's uh really not bad actually plus they have a battery just like the one I'm using. It's the same exact size, except for it's not Bluetooth capable, which I really don't need. And that battery is only $249. If you use my discount code, you get that battery for like $229. $229 for a lithium battery. That's crazy. Anyway, according to Google, a 100 amp hour battery should take about four hours for our three solar panels to charge in optimal conditions of course but this battery is 1280 watt hours now what that means now i'm mainly doing this solar to put lights in my storage building and i'm putting these four foot honeywell lights that i got from sam's club yes sam's club but these are led lights and they're really bright and i'm going to put three of these lights in the building actually the shop i'm standing in right now has the exact same lights in it so you know that they're pretty bright i mean you don't have no problem seeing in here do you next thing we need to do is build our solar system 
Not that kind of solar system. We need to build our solar system. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. Okay, so these lights, we have three of them, right? They use 50 watts a piece. Times three is 150 watts. Now, if we divide 150 watts into 280 watt hours, so 1280 divided by 150 basically means that this battery should be able to run those three watts for about eight and a half hours. Not including the power that the inverter uses, but the inverter that I'm using is 92% efficient. So you're only losing like 8%. So we should get at least eight hours of run time off of this battery for those lights. And if it only takes four hours to charge it back up that's plenty because i don't really go in my storage building all that much i'm just saying this is our charge controller for our solar system it's a victron energy which is actually one of the better charge controllers on the market and you can tell when you pick this thing up because it feels like it weighs about seven pounds it's a mppt which is very good because we're talking in simple terms. Remember, I'm not an expert. i just been learning about solar for the last year because it's very interesting to me. Did you see this first number? 150. That means this thing can take a maximum of 150 volts. There's a sticker on the back of every solar panel that tells you everything about it. On the back of our solar panel, it says that they put out 18.6 volts. 18.6 volts is not a lot. We can take 150 volts. But remember when I said that I was wiring the solar panels in series? When you wire solar panels in series, the voltage stacks. If you wire solar panels in parallel, the amperage stacks. So I'd rather the voltage stack than the amperage because amperage is what makes wires hot and makes things dangerous. <laughs> That's a redneck definition of electricity. Well, since our solar panels have 18.6 volts, we can round that number up to 20 because on very cold days, your solar panels can put out more voltage and more amps than even the max says on the back. So we're gonna round it up to 20. And with three solar panels wired in series, that's 60 and we're nowhere near 150. So we're safe there. Also on the back of our solar panels, it says that they put out 5.38 amps that's each solar panel but since we wired them in series it's going to stay 5.38 amps even if we wired them in parallel we still wouldn't get nowhere near this number and you probably just asked yourself why do you buy such a big charge controller well the thing is like i said earlier i may add more batteries later and if i add more batteries later i might want to add a couple more solar panels and getting a bigger charge controller just makes it where i don't have to replace this thing later you know what i'm saying and remember the wire that I ran from the solar panels into the storage building? Well, this wire is 10 gauge. If I wired my panels in parallel, I'd probably need a heavier gauge wire than this. But wiring them in series, I don't need a fuse. So wiring them in series seems like the way to go to me. Okay, so we got our battery for our solar system. And it's actually a really pretty battery. I don't know if that matters though. <laughs> And we got our solar charge controller, which takes the power of the sun through our solar panels and it actually turns it into what it needs to turn it into. Now the circuit is hot and the voltage is on the And it charges our battery with it. Now we need something to take the electricity out of this battery and turn it into 110 volts so that we can run our lights in our storage building. This is the inverter. It's its job to do that. It takes 12 volts and turns it into 110 volts so we can run our lights. This inverter here, I don't know if you watched my last solar video. It was actually really cool. It was where I made a portable power station kind of the same way I'm doing this. And it's sitting right over here. <laughs> I made it to where you could use a portable solar panel like this one. That way when you're out fishing or if your power goes off or something, you got yourself a backup system. But this inverter is a 2000 watt pure CN wave inverter. And yes, I know that you pronounce that sign, but I like saying sin. People about died in the comment section of the last video cause I got that sin. <laughs> 
But for the purpose of this video, this is a pure sin converter, which basically means it has a smooth, pure line and it won't harm any of your delicate electronics like your laptop, video games, you know what I'm saying. But the old modified converters, their wave ain't quite that pure. If you know what I'm saying. But I actually got this inverter from Harbor Freight. They have a new Jupiter line out. And I thought, well, if this thing breaks, at least I can take it back. So get the extended warranty. But we're going to try this thing out anyway. But right here on the back, it says connect input polarity properly using a two gauge cable up to six foot or voids warranty. So basically what I'm saying, we can go up to six foot, two gauge, and we can use it with a 2000 watt inverter. Ain't no wires on this thing going to be anywhere near six foot. So we should be fine. Now, the reason you can't go over six foot after six foot, you have to go up to a bigger wire because the length of a wire actually creates resistance. So your wires are going to be getting too hot after you go over six foot. But I kind of tend to like the overkill stuff. What would your mama say? Go big or go home. I don't want my wires getting hot. I don't want my building burning down. Ah! I'm ducking and everything. Dying I, in the house, I'm, I got scared. I dropped my hot pocket. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I went ahead and hooked this battery up to my inverter so I can show you something. I mean, it's just a simple hookup. I ain't got my wires trimmed down to size yet or nothing. So it's just a battery hooked to an inverter. This right here is one of my 5,000 lumen lights. And like I said, I got these at Sam's Club for like 20 bucks a piece. But the reason I hooked the battery to the inverter, then plug my light into my inverter, is because I wanted to show you this right here. This is one of the reasons I went with the Harbor freight inverter because this is actually cool it's got a cable looks kind of like an ethernet cable but it's really more like a phone cable now you can hook this up in your car and you hook that red wire up if you use it in a vehicle but if you're using this in your house you disable the ignition lockout which already done you hook the other side into the inverter and they give you plenty of this wire so you can run this thing anywhere you want and what this switch does is it cuts the inverter on and off so basically my battery ain't going to be part of the equation my battery is going to be hooked to my charge controller and the solar panels are going to be charging it i'm going to have this mounted over near the door and all i gotta do is hit this button and it cuts the inverter on which in turn cuts my lights on i'll give you an example you see what I mean? When I hit this switch right here, it just powers up the inverter. That's pretty dang cool right there. When you get ready to leave the building, you just hit the button again and lights go out. That right there is freaking awesome. So now I just gotta unhook all this crap and put it in the building. This is the box that it's all going into. So I need to drill a hole over here at the top of the box for my cable to run through for my solar panel. And I'm gonna drill a hole on this side of the box so I can run a drop cord through it and run the drop cord to my lights. This is gonna be a simple setup, and I just wanted it big enough to where I could run a drop cord cable, and that seems to be just about perfect. Next, we're gonna take this and mount it in the building. So this is my storage building. I got crap everywhere. Look at this mess. I can't even get in here to straighten it out because it's dark. I put this old fluorescent light up here, then I plugged it in and run it to a drop cord so I'd have a little light in here. But we really wanna get this straightened out. We need some light. This here is all of my wife's Christmas decorations and Halloween and other stuff. Anyway, right here on this wall, I think it's where I'm going to mount my box. Because right up here is where the cables are coming in from the solar panels. We can just run them over and into our box. First, I got to move all this crap out of my way. Dang, that's a big box. But like I said, I might want to span on this project later. Now we just got to start putting our components in here. I think I'm going to put mine like this. That way the terminals will be close to my power inverter because I'm mounting the inverter right up here. Something else that's cool about this battery is you can pull this strap and you basically can just take this thing off. If you're doing a mount like this, you really don't need that strap. So 
we're going to lose the strap. That looks better already. Now we just need to wire this battery to our inverter. All right, so now we got all our components in. And yes, it's really this simple. All you need is a charge controller for your solar panels. You need a battery to charge up. Just saying. Then you need your inverter to turn that 12 volt into 110 volts. And... It's just that simple. Now I done pulled my wires through from my solar panel. This side right here says positive and negative battery. Your positive and your negative battery cable will come out of here. It will run down to the battery. Then this side right here says PV and it means photo something. I'm sure somebody in the comments are gonna tell me what it means. But this is where you plug up your solar panels. So the next thing we need to do is make our cables that goes from this positive down to this positive and from this negative up to this negative. Do not hook up this PV side until the battery side is already hooked up. You can hook up one wire if you want, but do not hook up both of those wires because you'll burn up your charge controller if it's not going to the battery. If it's not going to the battery, it don't have nowhere to go, so it'll burn up your controller. Next thing we're gonna do is run our wires from the positive and negative battery, and we're gonna make our wires that run from the battery to our inverter. Now after I cut my wire the size that I needed to fit, you're gonna have to crimp it on there. In the last video, I took it and got somebody to do it. How much owe you? Eh, about three. Three dollars? About 300. Two, two, Holy two for this video, I bought my own power crimpers. Look at that. This right here is also a crimper, and this is like the cheapest one that you can buy. Put your battery cable in it, and you hit it with a hammer. You hit the top with a hammer, and it locks it in there. This one was done with this hammer crimper. And I gotta be honest, I kind of like this one better because they both got a good hold to them. This is actually kind of cool. But no matter which one you use, just make sure that you use a good heat shrink tube. It's got the glue on the inside. It'll seal everything off for you. Kind of like this right here. You know what I'm saying? So I finished up the wiring on this thing. You just run your positive battery cable, this one right here, over to your positive terminal. On this cable, I used a six gauge wire. If you're setting it up like I am, you run a two gauge wire off of that terminal up to your inverter. You run your other cable from your negative battery terminal down to your negative terminal. It's also a six gauge cable. And of course I got a two gauge negative coming off of it going up into the inverter. On the inverter, I just got a drop cord that's a splitter plugged in. So basically all I use for the lights, I got two 10 foot drop cords, two of them, and I run one from the farther slot. Then I ran it into this junction right here and hook my second light to it. After I ran over to the box, I had a splitter like this where I hooked the two father slots and the closest light into it. And I just hooked that wire into my inverter. I also used these big tie straps. I mean, they're big tie straps. Now I use them on some of the two by fours. I also use these little clamps to hold things up where it needed to be held up. I gotta say, this thing turned out pretty dang nice. And it wasn't even hard, and I ain't never gotta pay the power company again. That right there is pretty dang cool. There's one thing left to do, and that's to install our switch to make it all run. <laughs> Okay, so we got our switch mounted. It ain't nothing fancy. I just cut me a board. Now there's two by fours in there, so I'm gonna screw it on that. I'm gonna take my cable, plug it into my inverter, and we should be able to cut our lights on with the switch. And now, when you hit the switch, lights go off. Hit the switch again, lights come back on. That right there is pretty dang cool. I really like how simple this build was and I really like the way it turned out. And I really like that it come with the switch. That's pretty dang cool. The coolest thing about this system, if I want to make it much, much bigger, I can add batteries for $229. Think about that. Lithium batteries have gotten a lot cheaper. If you guys that's still intimidated on my last solar video about the solar power station, people put in the comments, just buy a Jackery, just buy a Yeti. You know, stuff like that. Well, I'm sure they're fine, and I can't really speak to those two, but I can tell you about EcoFlow. Eco 
flow. Because this little generator here is almost as big as the one I built on that video. Cut it on so you can see it. As you can see, it's at 100%. And it's been sitting in my closet for at least eight months. So these things sitting around, they do not lose their charge. I actually had my roof redone like eight months ago. Well, we had a power line drop. This little generator that I've had for five years years ran my refrigerator from that morning to that evening and at the end of the day it was still at 80 percent power that is pretty impressive well i was so impressed with this eco flow recently i got this eco flow which makes this little generator look tiny i mean look at that it is kind of tiny. <laughs> now this EcoFlow right here is pretty dang awesome. It's got way more battery capacity and it can handle way more voltage. Plus check that out. It'll actually do 220, 220 volts. That's pretty cool. And we took this thing to CatCon last month. We run the sign in our booth and charged our phones and did whatever else we need to do with it. And after three days of use, well, I'll show you what happened after three days of use because I hadn't charged it up yet. So after three days of use, it still got 66% power. That right there is pretty awesome. Okay, here's my idea. If after watching this video, you're still intimidated about making a system like I just made, which turned out freaking awesome, by the way, you could buy a pre-built generator like this. This smaller one that I bought five years ago would be fine for my building. But you take one of these generators, set it inside your building, then just hook up the solar panels like I did, run the wire inside your building, and plug it into your generator, and then run your lights off of this generator. And that would be a whole lot simpler if this build intimidates you. That's actually a really good idea. But if you do build a system like I built, let's just say a hurricane or something comes by and knocks your power off. If you've got your building set up like I got my building set up now, I can use this in my house. And when it goes dead, I can take it out to my building and charge this thing up again. That is freaking cool. Just to let you know, by the way, you can hook solar panels directly into these generators. I really like that storage shed since I got some free electricity in it you know what i'm saying anyway if you like this video then you're probably gonna like this video so you should go over there and check it out because i'm pretty sure you're gonna like it especially if you like this video i'm i'm just saying i'm serious go over there and check it out because this video is over <laughs>